<laughs> Greetings, health scholars, and welcome back to the For Health Scholars channel. I am live tonight for our second uh, Q&A session, and I'm super excited to be answering many of the questions that I have received over the last couple of weeks. But before I jump into today's conversation, um, I'm going to give a few people just the opportunity to get on, let YouTube notify you that I am live in if you're watching from LinkedIn, welcome as well. Um, you can also drop your questions in the, I believe, in the comment section on LinkedIn, and it should show up on my end. But I'm super excited to be hosting the live chat tonight. So let me just go and check. Give me a second. All right. Okay, okay. All right, so as I stated, we are live tonight. I'm answering some of the questions that I, I have received over the last couple of weeks from our subscribers. I'm always excited to see the questions that we have up. And tonight, really, I'm gonna focus on the questions that came about international healthcare administration management or public health programs. I'm also gonna talk about fellowships. So last night or yesterday for some of you, I posted a video on fellowships. So I, there's a few questions that I received from that. And as well, I'm open to answering the questions that you may have. So if you are tuning in, so I see a few people coming in. Um, welcome. Definitely say hello and you can drop your comments in the comment section and I should see them. But I am super excited for tonight's live Q&A. All right. And so as we're waiting for people to come in, tonight's Q&A is sponsored by a masterclass that I have coming up called the Healthcare Resume Writing Masterclass. So if you are a professional who is very much interested in getting hired in the healthcare space, you've been applying to jobs and you haven't had much success, then um, this resume class will be right for you. Or if you want to know how, how to write a resume that can bypass or pass through, because not necessarily bypass, but pass through the applicant track system, I'm more than happy in this um, right, masterclass to also show you the ropes. And so I have been working on a case study behind the scenes because I'm always a proponent about showing you the truth and, and what's authentic. So I've been running a case study. And over the last few weeks, I have been able to get feedback because I went under, I won't say undercover, but I have been applying to jobs using the strategies that I have included inside of my course, which is from healthcare graduate to hired. And in that course, I really show you how to go from a healthcare graduate to active job seeker to hired. And so I've been running a case study. And in that case study, We've been having some great results because I want to know that the strategies are effective. So on the screen here, you can see that a recruiter had reached out to me and um, just using the strategies that I shared in that study. And um, this was a person that I went to one of their career fairs uh, like maybe a month ago and was networking because, you know, I'm a proponent about networking. And um, I was able to connect with this recruiter. I didn't give my resume, but I just gave my contact information. She was able to reach out to me. And as you can see, the conversation is here, very much interested in getting me to get an opportunity for one of their patient access leadership roles. Um, I've also helped another individual as well um, in recent times. I've helped a lot of people, but in recent times doing this case study of just making sure that the strategies work, I've also helped um, a few people get into their desired programs or um, job opportunities. So I would definitely encourage you to sign up for the masterclass. It is going to be on Saturday, um, March 25th, between 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be really hands-on. I'm going to give you all the strategies that I have learned and I've used personally in um, my journey of getting hired and finding the right type of jobs, because it's not just any type of job, but the right type of job. So definitely check it out. I hope to see See you there. The link is in the description box to sign up, or um, you can scan the QR code here, and I'll um, you can definitely find out information from there. And so I see a few people is on. Welcome. So I'm gonna pull this up. I have uh, Anna Rose from Riley. Hi, Anna Rose. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here. Um, I see a few more people have joined. So if you have questions, definitely drop them in the uh, chat box and I'll pull them up to show it here. But thank you, Anna Rose, for tuning in. 
So I do have some questions up and I'll just get started for the essence of time that people have sent to me prior. So I'll start with those. And as your questions start to come in, I'll be able to answer that. So give me a second to pull that up. All right. So the first question that I have received, and I thought this was a really good question, um, and the person stated, as an international student, can they complete a healthcare administration management or public health degree in the U.S.? And the answer to that from a surface level is absolutely yes. Um, the U.S. is very much known for for migration and people coming to go to school here. But the thing is you have to find the right program. And so I would tell you, create, start to do a Google search, look at universities, look at what region of the US you want to be in. That, that's a big one, okay? What region of the US you want to be in and then start to see if they have universities in that area that has programs that are from healthcare administration management and public health. You'll definitely find public health degrees. Those are more common or public health degree programs. Those are definitely more common, but healthcare administration and management, we're coming through. <laughs> so you just have to kind of determine what part of, or what side of the U.S. you would like to be in and then start from looking at universities there. Okay, I see some more people coming up. So let me shout y'all out. Uh, let's see. We have Natasha from Canada. Hi, Natasha. Welcome. Thank you for joining me from Canada. We have um, Alua Bunmi. Oh, forgive me if I did not say that right. <laughs> but um, welcome. Thank you for joining. We have Kirk and Danielle from ATL. I think that's my brother-in-law. <laughs> it was my brother-in-law. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Uh, and also, we hit a milestone. So so while y'all are coming in, we did hit over a thousand subscribers on the Fahel Scholars channel. So from the bottom of my heart, I just want to thank y'all all for tuning in, subscribing to the channel, and just um, sharing all your kind words. People have been in the comments showing me so much love, and I really, really appreciate that. And so thank you. Okay, Aluwa Bunmi is from Texas. Okay, I'm based in Texas. I'm in the DFW area. So welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. So I was going over the first question. So the person asked, can they do an international degree in healthcare administration management or public health in the U.S.? Absolutely. The U.S. is very much welcome to students. And it's actually a good way to migrate to the U.S. Um, there are multiple ways to migrate, and I'm not an immigration specialist. But I would definitely tell you that doing a school program can help you a lot. I know that there's a specific visa that you may qualify for to do a graduate program or even undergraduate program. But once again, you have to touch base with the school. You have to do some research and then find the program that's right for you. I would tell you if you are an international student and you're under the space of wanting to do a healthcare management or administration degree, really look if the degree programs are accredited. So we're accredited by the CAM accreditation. If you're going to do an MBA or a business administration degree or even a doctor degree, just make sure that the universities that you attend have the accreditation as a university, but also the accreditation from the program in itself. All right, the next question I, I received was, as an American, can I go abroad to get a degree in healthcare administration, management, or public health? And my answer to you is absolutely. Um, if you are a person who's very much interested in international affairs, or you are just like, uh, you want to live abroad, uh, I know we're in the great migration where many people are leaving the U.S. and going to other countries. And if you want to do school, once again, that's a great opportunity. And it would probably be a little easier um, from my knowledge, don't hold me to it, but to secure a visa to stay. And so I know there are a few universities in Europe that offer a healthcare administration and management program. There are many universities that offer public health. So public health is a little more common. If you are interested in going to Canada, there are some programs there in Canada for all three sectors. If you're interested even in the Caribbean. So there's a few people who reached out to me. Um, there was someone from Trinidad and Tobago. I can't remember his name, but thank you for your kind words. Um, they were, oh, it was Angela. Sorry, not a he. An Angela. So Angela, if you're tuning in, uh, thank you for so much for your kind message. I know you're based in Trinidad and Tobago, was very much interested in, in advancing in a degree with healthcare administration, um, but you were looking at, you know, what are some options in the Caribbean? I know that in Jamaica, they have a few programs through the University of the West Indies. Um, they have different campuses throughout the Caribbean, and they do have 
have a healthcare management program. So it's not administration, it's management. But if you watch my video on what are the differences between the two, you just know management is a subspecialty of administration, but that can help you. Australia, Australia is another big one. And actually, if you are a person who don't mind being under down under, um, they really have so many programs for individuals to come and help with their work, um, healthcare workforce. And so if you wanted to check out a program there, that's another great opportunity. They do have a few healthcare administration management and of course, public health programs. I will tell you the University of Sydney, I've had some conversations with them. They have a really good healthcare management program. So you could check them out. So um, even in Asia, so the University of Singapore, I believe as well, has a healthcare administration and management program. So you really, if you are an American, very much interested in going abroad, it's something that I don't think is a bad idea and you just want to make sure you're doing it right. And so going, going through a school program is always a great opportunity. For those of you tuning in, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are for our second live Q&A. So if you have questions, just drop them in the comment section. I'll make sure to pull them up here. But I do have some questions loaded. All right. So the next question I received is, what colleges and universities do you recommend? So um, there are many opportunities out there. I only went to three colleges. I've worked at two. So I don't like to say I recommend them. I don't endorse them. But um, like the what I shared previously, if you depending on where you want to go to school and what region of the world, just Google their universities, make sure they're accredited, look at their success rate, speak to people in the field, graduates from those programs, and that can give you a feel on what decision to make for you. I know in Canada, they have the University of Toronto. They have a public health program there. And I actually know, um, funny enough, I had a conversation conversation with one of their directors from a, I think they have a black or, an, or um, I think it's a minority public health program that they have at the University of Toronto. So that's something that they launched, I believe, a year or two ago. That could be a great option for you as well if you are interested in Canada. Canada is a little cold. I've been to Edmonton and I shout out to those people who live there. It is very cold, but if you could bear the cold, that should, shouldn't be a problem. All right. Um, the next question I received was, what are some of the best ways to gain healthcare administration, management, or public health work experience? And um, I think this is a very common question. In my honest opinion, there are multiple ways to gain experience. If you are a new graduate, the, the best thing that you can do is try to find some type of fellowship program, internship program, or even externship and leverage your communication there. Um, if you are currently working for a healthcare entity, but you're not in the administration side, management side, or public health side, well, public health, I'll talk about that separately. But in healthcare administration, administration, management, you're working at that facility, start networking. I'm like a big proponent for networking because in my own personal experiences, it is because I spoke to people, made connections with people that I got really far in my career. There's only like one or two jobs that I acquired applying in traditionally and through like a, a job board. Okay. So, and even then the job, there was one of the jobs I found through the job board. I was able to find the hiring manager. I introduced myself through email and I stayed on top of their case. So this is the healthcare ecosystem right now or environment for, especially for non-clinical professionals, getting hired looks a little different. And, you know, right now they're looking for nurses, nurses, nurses. So when you go on all of these job boards, those are like the priority jobs, but it's not to say that non clinical professionals can't get hired. It's just that we have to kind of operate from a strategy to get hired. So absolutely, I would tell you that is one way. Fellowships, internships, externships, if you're working at a current organization, connect with people. And sometimes you have to give a little <laughs> to be able to get ahead. So I, in my career, especially when I was working in program management, office management, I learned a lot of roles and I participated on a lot of committees. And because I participated in various committees, they were, when it was time for me to get hired, they knew me and they were like, oh, absolutely. But if, even if you don't have that inside connection, just apply, continue to apply, continue to work on your resume. I encourage you to come to my resume um, writing masterclass, which is on September 25th. I'll put it up in just a second. Actually, let me put that up now. But I encourage you to um, attend the 
masterclass. Let me give you some strategies on what you can include. And we are going to pull different job descriptions. So I'm definitely going to be um, very much showing you the ropes so that you can really prepare a resume document that grabs the attention of hiring managers, but also help you successfully pass through the ATS system. All right, so I saw some questions coming up from the community. So I'll start with those before I continue with mine. Okay. So uh, Lua Bunmi Jonah, and uh, they said, please, do you know any article to read for healthcare administrators? I mean, there are many articles that you can read for healthcare administrators. You could definitely go to the healthcare administration um, database if you want to read scholarly articles or if you're looking for just like blogs. So um, Becca Hospital has a really great uh, blog about what's happening in the business side of the healthcare industry. You can look at places like the CDC, hospitals, even hospitals, they do publish what we call white papers, and that can give you some insight of what's happening in the hospital. But I always tell people just to start with the scholarly material, things that have been peered reviewed. And so um, if you want, there's the health services management database, you have um, academic search premier, you have ESCO, you have, um, what is the other one? Uh, Sage, Sage is another good one. You can use Google Scholar to access the different type of articles depending on what area you're interested in reading about and that could take you there now if you use google scholar just note that some of the articles may lead you to a database that causes you to pay for it so um, be mindful of that if you are a student then you don't pay for those those articles, just go to your university library and just use the ISBN number or the article title to find um, that same article and read it for free. So uh, thank you for that question. I hope that was able to, I was able to give you a solid answer. All right. So the next question I had on my end was, are internships or fellowships paid? And um, this, re it really depends. Um, it depends on the organization. It depends on the actual fellowship program or internship program and the purpose for the internship or fellowship. Now, most internships, if you are doing it as a school requirement, nine out of 10 times, you're not going to get paid for that because your school is expecting you to do that internship to meet a criteria, which oftentimes it's just to finish your program. But it, there are some times where you can do an independent internship and your independent internships can be paid. It's just dependent on the organization. Fellowships, fellowships are a little different. Fellowships, most of the time they're paid, but there are some that are unpaid. But if they're not not paying you with a fellowship, they're accommodating something. So they're giving you like free housing or they're paying for you to travel. But most fellowships, they do offer a salary or a livable stipend to help you um, mitigate some of your uh, living costs while you complete that fellowship. Fellowships, you're usually about a year to two years long. On average, it could be a little longer. It could be a little shorter. But um, these are both great ways to gain that hands-on practical experience in the field, especially if you have never worked in the healthcare industry. And many people who do fellowships, they usually, once they're done with the fellowship, they get the job with that fellowship. So for example, if you work with the CDC, the CD, or do your fellowship, excuse me, with the CDC, nine out of 10 times, those people who completed the fellowship and they pass all the criteria et cetera, the CDC will help them transition into their network. So I highly recommend that you tap into that network. I know many people don't advocate for you to do fellowships, internships, or externships, but as if you can meet people, that is great. Okay, we have Angela. Oh, Angela, I just was talking about you. Um, Angela is from Trinidad and Tobago. I was just talking about your question of, um, you know, what universities in the Caribbean that can help you with a healthcare administration and management program. So I just remembered, um, you probably got to watch the replay to get the answer. But um, thank you for joining the live chat. All right, so I'm gonna move forward with the next question that I had on my end. If you have questions, if, if you're coming in for the first time, welcome. My name is Dr. Arobasa, and, and I am the host and founder of the For Health Scholars community. I'm so excited to have you here. Drop your questions in the chat box and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions on live. All right, 
The next question I have, what are some resources to help prepare for the licensed healthcare administrator exam? Oh, this is a really good question. Um, if you were a part of my Christmas series called Career Miss, I talked about the um, nursing home administrator position and if you want to be a nursing home administrator, I definitely encourage you to be a licensed nursing home administrator because you get more perks with that. So you can leverage a higher salary. Number one, most of the time they're looking for licensed nursing home administrators to work those roles. You have the opportunity to impart change in those facilities. And so I definitely encourage you to explore that route if you're interested in the long-term care spaces. Um, there are some resources that you can use to prepare. So the one that came to my mind is the National Administration of Long-Term Care Administrators Board, and they have so many study materials. Now, to access the materials, for the most part, you may have to pay for um, some of them. I believe, I think they have like a monthly fee where you access their material, but the reason so why I tell you to go to that platform is because they're the ones who provide the exam, the national exam. So you know that the nursing home administrator um, board exam, it can be the state one or the national one. If you can't afford this uh, national one, then do the state. Uh, but if you could do afford the national board, that's even better than the state. All right. But uh, the pricing points for those exams are significantly uh, different. And if you just want to get started, then do the state. And then when you get some experience, get some money under your belt, you could definitely do the national one. But go into the website of the people who created the exam to read their study material will definitely help you in um, passing that exam. Okay, I have a question coming up from the comments. I'll switch to that. Okay, it's from Angela. Angela says, I asked about PhDs, PhDs for retirees. Yes, I remember Angela, um, you were based in Trinidad and Tobago. And um, there, there are a few universities in the Caribbean. The one that I know of, because I've been in conversations with them, is the University of the West Indies. They have campuses um, throughout the Caribbean, I believe. The one that I was in communication with was the one based in Jamaica, so the Mona campus. They do have a healthcare management. I don't particularly believe it's a doctoral program. In your case, Angela, you may have to do either a doctor of business administration and see if they have a specialty in healthcare management, because I, I didn't really find programs in the Caribbean that has a doctorate in um, uh, healthcare administration. Public health, yes. Now, public health is more common than healthcare administration and management. But um, just, just do, do a quick Google search. Ask around. Um, if you don't mind, Angela, what university did, uh, did you attend? I know you say you're a retiree, but what university did you attend? Just drop it in the chat box. Oh, okay. I see a next question from you. It says, because it's not fully or partially funded to retirees at the UWI international suggestions. Okay. So um, there are a few international programs. Um, depends on where you, you want to live. If you were to come to like the example, the United States. So a program that I know for public health is the University of North Carolina. They have a good one, John, John Hopkins um, University very great for public health. I, I think they are like one of the leaders in academic institutions for public health if you want to migrate abroad. They have a few universities in Europe. Um, what is the, and there's no, I know there's one in Sweden as the name of the university slipped my mind, but as it comes back to me, I'll definitely share it. Um, the University of Sydney in Australia, they have a really good healthcare management program that allow you doctoral programs. So that's the ones that I know at the top of my head. Angela, I think you sent me an email. So if you re email me again, I'll just give you some suggestions there. Um, you could just reach out to me, reply to the email that you sent and that I respond to, but I hope that's helpful. Okay, I see another question coming up. This is from, can I call you Jonah? I hope I could call you Jonah. Jonah, I am not Yoruba, so <laughs> I'm, I'm not even fully Bini, but uh, 100%, I'm only Bini when I need, need to be and, and when we do Nigeria Pride. So I'm a Brooklyn girl at heart. So forgive me if I mispronounce your name. Um, after studying BS healthcare administrator, do someone need to the state exam? So it really depends on what part of the administration. If you just 
um, it's usually for the nursing home administrator that um, you have to do the state exam. There's no other licensing exams for just healthcare administrator. So you don't need a licensing exam. But if you want to work with the aging population in long-term care, because that population is deemed vulnerable, that's the reason for the licensing exam. So um, there are vulnerable populations. So aging population, pediatrics, those who are incarcerated here in the U.S. are considered a part of the vulnerable population. Those who have any type of cognitive decline and they cannot advocate for themselves, they're considered the vulnerable population. So as a result of working with the special population, you need to be licensed and for a nursing home administrator position. Now, doesn't mean that you can't get a job as a nursing home administrator without the licensure, because I know several people, I used to work for a nursing home and um, a lot of the administrators there did not have the license for the, the nursing home administrator, but they were administrators in the long-term care facility. But um, the licensing exam is always helpful. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, uh, Angela says, thanks. Okay, I see Kwanda. Hi, Kwanda, you're from North Carolina. Your major is healthcare management. Oh, I'm excited. I'm happy you've been able to join. Thank you for joining. If you have any questions, definitely drop them in the chat box. All right, let me go through. I think I've captured everybody from the comments. I'm gonna go back to the questions that I had uh, from others beforehand. Okay, so the next question I received, what are some resources to help prepare for health information? information technologies certification. So there are so many resources and it depends on the certifying organization. So if you're doing it through a university, nine out of 10 times that university's certification program, they're going to give you the different types of resources, whether it's a textbook, whether it is a website, an ebook. So if you're doing your cert through a university, then keep that in mind. They're going to give you those resources. If you're trying to do the cert through like a professional association, nine out of 10 times, they give you some resource or they tell you where you can go for the resource. But if you are just trying to inquire and you're not sure if you want to move forward, a platform that I recommend is actually for educators. So it, this platform is actually for people who teach health information technology, but as a student, it could be helpful to you because the information is for free. So if you go to their website, healthit.gov, and you'll see it looks like a whole bunch of like modules. Just click on it. They give you like PowerPoints and all of that information for free. That is a great free resource that can help you prepare for a um, health information technology cert. If you're doing a degree pro program, of course, the university is going to give you resources, but I could, those are the ones that I can think of at the top of my head. Also, whoever you're going to do the certification with, I would tell you just double check to make sure that in a part of the fee includes access to the material. That should be helpful to you as well. All right. If you're just tuning in, I see a few people are still coming on. I want to welcome you once again. My name is Dr. Arobasa, and I am hosting our our second live Q&A, just get an opportunity to connect with our subscribers and viewers. If you're on LinkedIn as well, you could drop your questions. I can pull it up here. But once again, thank you for joining the live. Um, I'm just checking the comment section to see if I've gotten everybody I have. All right. So those are all of the questions that I captured over the last two weeks um, on my end. But like I said, I could stay on for a few more minutes um, to just wait for those if you have any questions. But once again, thank you for joining. If you came in late, I do have a uh, healthcare resume writing masterclass that I'll be hosting on the 25th of March. If this is, sounds like if you need help with your resume or you want some advice on how to write a resume, then I highly encourage you to attend this um, masterclass. For those of you for today attending the masterclass, you can just access the link and I'm running a special. So you get a, like a percentage off from the masterclass price, but it's really going to be in depth. It allow you to bring in your resume. We'll work on it together as a group because it's a group thing. And I really hope that I'll give you the strategy that you need to help bypass the rigorous applicant tracking system. And so if you watch my video on how to acquire a healthcare administration position, I talked about the ATS there. I also have a course titled From Healthcare Graduate to Hired. And in that course, I actually take you behind the scenes of an applicant tracking system to show you what that process is all about. And um, it is a numbers game if you're applying just through the job boards. That's why I always 
this push for you to network, 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 network. There's multiple ways to network. Um, I will tell you if you are a person who is like, okay, where do I start? Start with LinkedIn. That's a great place. Uh, plenty of uh, there. A few recruiters who've reached out to me via LinkedIn and they're like, okay, we have this position. We thought this would be a great fit for you. So you really want to optimize your LinkedIn profile for that because that has been happening, especially because I've been more active on LinkedIn these days and they've been reaching out. So uh, you do your part and making sure that you optimize your profile. I do have a video on how to find jobs using LinkedIn as well. Uh, optimize your profile, connect with people, start commenting on their posts, um, see people who in the different positions that they have, and then start exploring their university or organization or university, depending on where they work. And uh, most of the time people tell you in their LinkedIn profile, this is the job or the company that they're working for. So you could just go to their website, see the jobs that they have available on their job boards. And I mean, you really can just take off running uh, with the right strategy to get hired. But you do need a very good and well-written resume. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it does have to capture the attention of the hiring managers. All right, so I'm gonna check in one more time um, to see if anybody have any questions. For those of you who have tuned in, thank you once again. Okay, I see another question come up, all right. Kwanda says, I will receive an associate degree in healthcare management, I would like to work towards a bachelor's degree. Absolutely. I honestly believe in this day and age, you need to have at least a bachelor's. More and more companies are asking you to have a master's and um, some years of experience. So if you have an associate degree, it's an amazing start. If you get your bachelor's, even better. If you feel like you have the capacity to move forward to a graduate program and acquire a master's degree, absolutely. I have a doctorate in healthcare administration, but I will tell you um, from what I have been seeing, if you, with a doctorate degree, you really wanna be in upper tier leadership most of the time, or you do wanna be in academia. So you don't necessarily have to go as far to get uh, like a doctorate to start working in the field. You can really start start working with a bachelor's. But in this time that we end post pandemic, we really have to change the strategies. It's gone of the days where you just submit and people are going to come to you. But I do also believe in heavily intervention. There's nothing that God can do for you. But um, he may also be waiting for you to have some practical experience and and practical application to get the job. So networking is something that I'm a big fan of because it has worked for me time and time again. And just because I knew somebody, now they thought of me and they sent a the position my way. And you'll get to a space where if you really position yourself well, Oh, that positions will also come to you and you're not always looking for it. So I do encourage you to at least get your bachelor's quanda and um, wishing you all the best in the journey. Uh, and let me know uh, once you graduate, uh, let us know how that went. Okay, so I'm going back into the comment sections. Let's see. Okay, I think I've gotten everybody. All right, so I'll Stay on for maybe like 10 more minutes before I head out. But once again, for those of you tuning in, welcome. And thank you so much for joining our second live. You can connect with me, um, leave questions in the comment section. If you watch the replay of this, because you didn't catch it live, that's fine. Also, um, I share a lot of information on my LinkedIn as it relates to the profession of healthcare management administration. So you can follow me there. I can pull up my, let me remove this. So that's my LinkedIn handle. Also, you could join the For Health Scholars newsletter. I share out information there, stuff that I, um, that I talk about here, but also um, stuff that I don't talk about on YouTube there. So check it out. Okay, I have another question come up. All right, she says, I think her name is Razan. Okay, Razan, welcome. Um, I have a master's degree in international healthcare management from the UK with no direct experience in the field. I just moved to the US and I want to work in the field. Where do I start? Razan, this is a really good question. Um, and because there are a few things that um, may serve as a barrier to you, but um, I would definitely tell you if you have a master's degree, start reaching out to, uh, well, let me ask you, Razan, first, what area do you want to work in? Do you want to work in the hospitals? Do you want to work outpatient? Do you want to work in the insurance side, research? Let me ask you that first before I give you the advice. So let me know, Razan, 
in the comment. Um, Kwanda says, awesome. Okay, perfect, Kwanda. Um, but Roseanne, let me know what area do you want to work in? And while she's letting me know, I'll take the next question. What are your thoughts on the Masters of Public Administration, Health Policy, and Management Concentration? So public administration is great. It's good as well. If you want to be in the healthcare space, then specialize in health policy or management. Policy is a great skill to have. So I've written a few policies before, and the organizations that I have worked for, they really appreciated that I have that skill set and um, to write policy. So policy is a good one, especially if you want to work for governmental agencies or if you want to work for or not for profits. And that was another thing that I wanted to share with you all. So I know for many people, you want to work on the inpatient side, the hospital, but that's not the only place where you can find uh, positions, especially in the field of healthcare management and administration. Public health, you're more community based, community service. So governmental agencies is maybe another platform for you. Federal agencies may be another option for you, but you don't have to only work in the hospital, not for profits. So I worked for two not for profit organizations and their businesses, they're very viable and they're dedicated to serving patients at their greatest point of need. So really um, in my course, I even walk you through just the different areas of the healthcare system that you can work in. But yeah, uh, uh, Masters of Public Administration is great. Uh, it gives you the flexibility to work in other sectors when you have public am administration. If you do something like healthcare administration or management or public health, it's really specific to those industries. But a public administration, you can work in multiple platforms. So if you decide, like, I don't want to be in healthcare anymore, you want to work for another entity, you still have that experience. So Malik, I hope that answers your question. Okay, Kwanda says, thank you, I will. Roseanne said you wanna work in the hospital. Okay, so, so Roseanne, there's a few things that I would suggest to you. The first one that I would suggest to you is to see if they have available job opportunities. If you have the ability to work in the US, all right, because there's that visa component. If you have like a status that you can work, start applying to some jobs there. I also would tell you, try to go for a fellowship program or do some volunteer work just to get your foot in the door um, for healthcare management. Attend um, several events. So they're like go on eventbrite.com and see what events are coming up and the um, healthcare events that are coming up and network with people there. Yes, I can work in the US. Oh, that's perfect. So if, start applying to jobs. I would tell you also try to see if you could do some type of fellowship program or um, volunteer a little bit. Do, let me see, a certain teaching hospitals are another great place for international professionals because teaching hospitals usually are welcome professionals from all backgrounds of life and they'll be more prone if you didn't have your visa status to sponsor you. But if you could work, just start looking at the job boards. I would tell you explore LinkedIn, um, make a list of like, I would tell you make a list of five organizations that you want to work at and go to their job boards and see what jobs they have up. Then go to LinkedIn and see, type in that organization and see who's their executive management people there and just start to connect with them there. Express that you um, saw a position or you want to connect with them and um, take it from there. But you would definitely have to network per se. Uh, okay, Rosanna, I hope that is helpful. Let me know. You drop your question, another question in the chat box. Okay, I'm going to pull up the next question. Can one acquire a PhD in public health in two years if really committed to the research program? Ha. Ah, okay. So a PhD, um, from my experience, no. You can't do it in two years. There's only a few programs, like doctoral programs that you can do in a short period of time. So like the doctor of nursing practice, they usually, their program is like one to three years. But the PhD process is not linear. No doctoral process here in the U.S. is linear or for the most part, many places that I know. Now, there are some UK universities where you don't have to do like two years of didactic courses first before you get into the dissertation writing stage. But in the US, you, before you even get to your dissertation writing stage, you have to do at least one to two years of coursework in the field. So already that two year expectation is out of there. I did a professional doctorate, so I have a doctorate in healthcare administration. And what they advocate for you is that that could take you anywhere from three, yeah, three to four years 
on paper. But when you get inside the program, there's many other components that you have to work with compared to the bachelor's and, and master's program. So in the doctoral side, you have to go through a series of committees. And if you're doing a PhD, you're writing original research. So with that original research, before you even can e connect with your survey participants, you have to go through the IRB. And even as the professional doctorate, you have to go through the IRB, but it depends on what type of research, if you want to do with human participants, depending on how you write your research proposal, the IRB may reject you and you have to go back and revise. So one thing I will tell you, and this was something I learned through trial and error as I was going through my doctoral program, the doctoral process is significantly different than your bachelor's or master's degree. You have to go in it with the mindset that, that it can take longer than what you expected. PhDs especially, they are research doctorates or original doctorate, depending on the university, depending on your ability to pass your exam, your candidacy, candidacy exam first, passing that, then writing your research proposal. So it took me a year to really um, perfect my research proposal before I could submit it to the committee at my university and then submitted it to the IRB. Okay, because I was interviewing, my research focused on um, the gender discrepancies that we see in executive healthcare leadership in the healthcare space. So I had to interview uh, women administrators. That all took time. So the realistic answer to you is probably not, not for a PhD. You may get through a PhD within five years years, maybe, depends on the program, but it's not a program that you can come in with speed. I know people who have been doing their doctoral program for eight, nine years. I've known people who graduated from the professional doctorate in four years. So I will tell you, don't go into the doctorate program thinking that you can finish with time because that's not how it works. You, Some universities make you pu publish first, um, so you, while you're working on your dissertation, you are also publishing as well. And that takes time because these professional review boards, they have their own criteria, the professional associations. So there's a whole lot of moving pieces in it. And it's not to scare you. I don't want to scare you because if I had to do my doctorate again, I would have definitely did it um, because the, when you get to the other side, it's definitely rewarding. But I'm going to be honest with you. It is not a fast process at all. So Angela, I hope that is helpful. Um, if you're really committed to your research program, if you're really committed, so meaning like if you go full-time, you could probably do it in four to five years, more five, sometimes six, but there's some other factors with that. You, your university, um, depending on your university format. So there are some universities where you're only going for two semesters per year. So you have your fall semester, mm -hmm. okay. then your um, summer semester, if you can, and then um, spring or winter or uh, spring semester. So that also sets you back. There are some universities that do trimesters. So like every 14 weeks, you go to school, you take a break off, then you go back to school. So then you have that dynamic that you have to work with. And most of the time when you're off, you can't... Um, focus on your research. Like you can't, can't submit anything to be reviewed when you're on break. So those are those other factors that come into play that may stop you from just finishing in two years as well. Okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, Roseanne says, thank you very much. Super helpful. Okay. Thank you, Roseanne. Um, make sure to connect with me on Roseanne on LinkedIn as well. Uh, we can continue the conversation there because I really want to make sure you are well positioned and that's for everybody, it's not just for her, but you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, you'll get a faster response there from me. All right, Anna Rose says, I've been in medical field over 20 years. Can I apply for a healthcare administration position without a degree? I want to do insurance, hopefully remote, working as a financial analyst right now. Okay, Anna, this is a really good question. And depending on what skills that you have. Do you have some transferable skills that could be helpful for you? Um, healthcare administration, because of its diversity and position, it, you can have skills that you've gotten from the other 
other jobs that you worked in and apply it into healthcare administration? Do you have management experience under your belt? Do you have leadership experience under your belt? Um, it depends on the role that you want to acquire. You can do insurance. Insurance is another good industry to be in, um, depending on what roles and positions that are out there. So you can be from everything from an insurance salesperson to down to a billion coder to someone who's processing claims to being an auditor. So um, the world of insurance, you, these days you may find a remote position working as a financial analyst. There are some financial analyst positions that are remote, um, but it's all about kind of making that connection or finding the right position. Some will tell you they need a degree or experience can be equivalent. So that may work in your favor. Anna, okay. Coast, I have a question. Okay, if you have a question, just drop it in the comment section and I'll pull it up. Angela, you've been most helpful. Okay, perfect, perfect. This is an online school that is, uh, th this is an online school that suggested this, okay. All right. Uh, Anna says, got you. Got it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. So I have about 15 minutes um, that I could continuously spare for those of you who are joining in. Welcome to our second uh, Q&A session here at the For Health Scholars uh, community community on YouTube or on LinkedIn, if that's where you're watching. I, if you have questions, I'm just making myself available for you all to ask your questions here. I don't see anything else in the queue, right? Uh, but thank you all who have been sharing your questions. Let's see. All right. Okay. I think I've gotten everybody. So like I said, I'll stay on for the next Next 10 to 15 minutes. If you have questions, drop it in. Well, once again, thank you for joining. Um, and while I'm here, another thing that I could tell you for all of those of you who are interested in getting a doctorate in the field, so like public health, healthcare administration, management, have your research interests at the forefront when you're trying to find universities. Also, depend. Do you want to go and work in the field with your degree, or do you want to work in academia as a doctorate uh, professional or a candidate, right? Um, that can help you as well. If you want to work in academia, usually um, with working in academia, most of the times they ask for you to have the PhD, but it doesn't mean that you cannot use your professional doctorate because I have a professional doctorate and I've been working in academia for the last six years. Um, there, are, I've seen programs that ask you for just a doctorate in that specialty as well, focus on publishing. So this is something that I wish I could have done or knew prior when I was doing my doctorate, doctorate program, focus on publishing. And if you can collaborate with other like publishers, tap in with your, if you get into a program, and see if your professors are working on research initiatives, be a co-researcher with them. You probably won't be a primary investigator, but you could be a co-researcher and contribute. That will help you go a long way if you want to work in academia after graduating with your doctorate degree. Some schools will allow you to work while you're getting your degree, but now more and more they're asking you to have the degree or by the time you get hired, make sure that your degree degrees at in hand. The university that I started out with, they were a university that gave professionals who were doing amazing work in the field the opportunity to bring that knowledge into the classroom. So I started with my master's degree. But now the standard has always been that you have a doctorate. It has always been that. Okay. Um, another question. How do I find a publishing opportunities as an MHA student? I definitely tell you connect with your professors. First, um, or if you are a part of, of different types of like associations or committees as a university student, tap in there. But your professor is a great start. Your professors are usually working on some type of research initiative, and um, they may bring you on as a co-researcher, depending on how well you work. Usually, it's not your professors that are doing your class now, but a professor who can serve as a mentor to you, you can always join their initiatives. Um, that, that yeah, I think professors is a great way to start. Or if you see people in the industry that are working on research and you can reach out to them and you may ask them, okay, you know, I want to work. So there are some 
um, prof professionals that have research labs. And you may want to connect with them and work on initiatives that they have that can help you with publishing. But at the doctoral level, you definitely want to make sure you're publishing as much as you can, bringing, building up that portfolio. That is something that I, if to be transparent with you all, I, I didn't get to have the opportunity to do in my doctoral program. And now that's like been on my agenda to start publishing more outside of just my dissertation. And you can use your dissertation to to help you publish. You can break it down into smaller papers. That's another suggestion. Okay. Um, this is from Coast. I, I'm new to the healthcare sector, uh, student educational management and accounting first degree, but now hospital administrator, barely four months old now, but I need a, a course to study, kindly advise. So if you are, I believe you said you're working in hospital administration. If you are working in hospital administration, you definitely either want to do some type of healthcare management administration program or a business administration with a specialty in healthcare management. You can do public health depending on your interests. Um, but if you're in the management side, you want to get some knowledge of management degree. I will tell you to, if you say you have a bachelor's, focus on getting a master's in healthcare management or administration, that would be another great starting point. You could do uh, health services too. So there are some programs that are, they're not healthcare administration or management, but they're health services or health sciences. And a health sciences degree, you get a little bit of everything from different industries. So that could also be a, another option for you coast. This is my first time in a medical field. Oh, well, amazing. Congratulations for you for getting in. <laughs> There are many people who wish they could just get in. So whatever you did, um, definitely feel free to share in the comments. But congratulations to you. I would tell you, as you go through the, my advice for anybody new into the field, especially on the business side, be open to learning new experiences. Um, really, yes, I got the technical training by getting my degrees. But the things that I learned about the field, field of healthcare administration, excuse me, was because of being on the job. When patients, there's no textbook that you will read that will tell you how to effectively manage a, pa manage a patient when they're upset. Like they may give you some pointers, but it's only when you're in that real time that you actually learn how to navigate that situation. Or um, using EHR systems. Yes, you go take courses about that, but learning how ER EHR systems are designed for a given specialty, for a given practice on the field how to be a great leader, because the healthcare administration and management role is about leadership. You can read many papers, and I do encourage that because I often read articles that are in the industry. But my leadership, when I started at 21 to now, and let me actually say, I would say to 2018, because that's the last time I had a job in the field, working in the field. I've been working in academia ever since. But um from 2021 20, to 2018, so almost like 15 years in the field, I learned so much with working with people because I worked in the field with people. So just be open to the experience. Do know that sometimes you may have challenging days and that comes with the job. Sometimes you're going to have to be in the, make hard decisions. One of the hardest decisions I used to hate have to do because I'm, that's not my personality was to fire people. Like, I just hate it because in my mind, I'm like, okay, even if I fire you, that means you're going to lose income. You're going to be out of money for, you know, you're going to be out of a job and money. So that's just from my moral conscience. Like, I hated hiring people, but I had to do it. Even if you wasn't doing the job, but I had to do it. So, and learning how to fire and being uh, firing people appropriately so you don't get sued. That's another thing. So just be open cost at cost or coast as you're in the field, just be open to learning. Um, speak with people, try to get a mentor if you can and outside or within your organization. I've been fortunate enough that um, I had a few people along my journey who were able to pour into me as I was operating in this leadership, leadership space, but always be learning as well. That's my advice that I could give to you. Zeli Zim, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Kwanda says, I have 11 years of management and fast food business. I'm switching over to medical for healthcare management. So I'm really excited about doing something new. I'm excited for you. Ashley Kwanda, I'm very excited for you. And I'm here to tell you, if being in uh, hospitality, there's a 
lot of skills that you can use transferably in the healthcare space because you're in hospitality, you're in the business of serving uh, clients, whether it's from hospitals, foods, whatever. In healthcare, you're in the business of serving patients who are AKA clients. And if you have great customer service skills, that would take you far. If you have great analytical skills, that would take you far. If you're a good problem solver, that will take you far in the space of healthcare. So I'm excited for you as well. And all the best in your journey. Cole says, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. So I have about six more minutes before I have to head out. Um, uh, final call for questions. But once again, thank you for joining. Stay connected with us here at the Health Scholars uh, platform. We're working on a website. So just bear with me. I'm trying to get that up. Um, so you can really access all of these resources in one place. But for now, just check out either the description boxes and I share all of the resources there. When the website is up, I'll do a whole launch announcement or whatever um, for that. But um, thank you so much for sticking it out with me. Check out those resources. I hope to see many of you in the masterclass that I have, which is a resume writing masterclass, if that's something interesting to you. Um, definitely sign up for that. The link will be in the description box post when I get off here. Okay, somebody says, congrats, Kwanda. Yeah, congrats, Kwanda. I appreciate that camaraderie. Yeah. Thank you, Anna. We are wishing you all the best uh, um, in your journey and transferring into a, a field that is demanding, okay, <laughs> but it's definitely rewarding. All right. Okay, well, I don't have any other questions up from my end, and I think that we're done here. So let me just end it here by saying thank you once again for tuning in to our second live. Let me know if I should do this on a monthly basis, if this is helpful. Um, just let me know in the comments if you want a, a live a month or every month, but um, <laughs> let me know. But thank you once again. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And until next time, have a great evening and bye for now.